Let's do another example of a chi-square. Um, this one has to do with turning your taxes in on time and getting audited. So Dr. Dam asked if people turned in their taxes on time and if they got audited. So you can see here both responses require yes, no responses. So that's nominal and therefore we won't be able to run anything else except for a chi-square. So the first question we might ask is, are people more likely to turn their taxes in on time than not? And then we could ask, are people more likely to get audited than not? But then the more interesting question is to combine them, where we're gonna say, is there a relationship between turning taxes in on time and the likelihood of an audit? And then we're gonna to wanna to interpret. So you can see how question three is more interesting than the first two, but we still wanna establish if people are more likely to turn their taxes in on time and if they're equally likely to get audited or not. So let's go look and see how we can do this in JASP. So I open up the data set and actually I want to change both of these to nominal because yes, no responses are nominal, not ordinal. So let's go ahead and answer our test of independence and goodness of fit questions. So again, we'll click on frequencies and we're going to click on binomial test. So the first question was about whether people turn in their taxes and on time. So I'm going to put in deadline and then I'm going to make sure this stays 50-50 because the answers are yes, no. So here's our answers over here. We can see 70% of people turned their taxes in on time and 30% of people did not turn their taxes on time. Clearly 70% is significantly different than 50% because our p-value is less than 0.05. So now let's run the other goodness of fit, which is gonna be, are people equally likely to get audited or are they more likely to get audited? audited? So again, because this is a yes, no response, we're gonna leave this 50-50. And I'm gonna come down here, and so what I'm seeing here is 63% of people were not audited, 36.7% of people were audited. Now, 60% versus 36% doesn't seem, sorry, that does seem like, oh wow, people were more likely to not be audited. However, when we are testing these against 50%, that is not enough to be a significant difference. And how I know that is this p-value is 0.2, it is not less than 0.05. So while 60% and 36% sound different, 60% is not significantly different from the predicted value 50, and 36.7% is not a significant de value different from 50. So that means that people were equally likely to be audited versus not audited. Hopefully that's clear. So that answered our two goodness of fits, and now we wanna do a test for independence to see if turning your taxes in on time changed the likelihood of being audited or not, or predicts a different likelihood of being audited or not. So again, we're gonna come up to frequencies and we're gonna click on contingency tables. And so again, you can put these in whatever order makes sense to you. I like to put in the um, independent variable in the rows and the dependent variable in the columns. So to me, meeting the deadline is the independent variable and getting audited is the dependent variable. And so right off the bat, I can see, um, I can rerun that if I need the expected values, but I can see there is a significant predictive relationship. So the chi-square is 9.357, and um, my degrees of freedom is one because there's two conditions. So two conditions minus one would be one, and my p-value is less than 0.05. So what this means is um, when people are saying yes they turned their taxes in time on time four of them were audited and 17 were not audited whereas if if they turned their taxes in late seven of them seven of them were audited and two of them were not audited so i can sort of see this already with just the counts it looks like it flipped if you turn it in on time you were more likely to not be audited if you turn it in late you were more likely to be audited but if it doesn't jumping out at you this way, you can use the percentages that I showed you in the other examples. So I'm just gonna rerun this so I can do those. So if I come down to oops, cells, and let's say I do row percentages, see how 81% were not audited for those who turned it on time, but only 22% were not audited. Or maybe the better question would say 19% of people who turned their taxes in on time were audited, whereas nearly 78% of those who turned it in late were audited. So that might help you, or the, um, the plot might help you. So to do that, you go up to descriptive statistics, 
Um, I'm going to put in deadline as my variable and audit as my split. So I'm making two plots, one for those who got audited and one for those who didn't. And actually, you might mess with these, but I think it might, might make more sense to, to change these. So I'm going to do the audit and then deadline in the split. And then I'm going to come here and click on plots, distribution plots. And again, mess with these, change them around, see if they make sense. So if I come down here, these are people who did not um, get audited. Sorry, no, these are people who, gosh, now I'm split by deadline. Okay, these are people who did not meet the deadline, right? So were they like, so if they did not meet the deadline, and I know that because this is split this way. So if they did not meet the deadline, then yes, they were more likely to be audited. You can see the bar is higher than the no. Worse is if I scroll down, and these are people who did meet the deadline, you can see that they were less likely to be audited. So the, uh, did they get audited? No. So it might help you to look at the plot or it might help you to look at the numbers. In essence, if this is a significant value, you're going to have to figure out what the pattern is to help understand um, what to say to people. Ah, if you turned your taxes in late, you are more likely to be audited.